Hey everybody, Portland Chess Shop here to bring you the chess action and I'm going to be showing you a little bit about how to use Chess Base 11. Uh, first I want to give you a little bit of an update though. I know that the US Open as well as the World Championships is going on and I haven't been covering it nearly enough. I am totally aware of that but it's summer and I quit my old job. I have a new job starting next month. I've been playing a lot of chess downtown in Portland, Oregon and it's been really fun. The weather has been great. It's been sunny. So I've just kind of been enjoying myself, going on a lot of dates as well. So um, yeah, I haven't been covering as much chess as I'd like, but hopefully um, you're having some fun with your summer as well. So uh, the World Championships has been like a draw every game so far. And uh, in the US Open, I think that's pretty interesting. I do want to cover that again. Anyway, so this is Chess Base, and there's a f this is Chess Base 11. There's some uh, there's tabs. This is called the ribbon, uh, named after the Microsoft Word documents. So you have home, report, maintenance, and view. And honestly, it's a little bit like uh, Fritz in that there's a lot of buttons, and it's not even really that clear what all the buttons do. So this is a drill down, and you can find individual folders. Uh, like if you had a, a database in a single folder, you could drill down with this and try to open it. But it's a little bit unnecessary to have to have this. So what I do have here is I have King's Gambit. This is a uh, this is a line that one of my friends came up with. So that's just a single PGN that has some uh, has some games. Here are some games that I was uh, preparing for my opponent Andrew. We were playing slow chess, um, correspondence chess, and I was using Chess Base to battle him. But mostly what I have is I have this thing called Big Database, um, and that is, it's 2010, so it's a little bit outdated, but it has, uh, what is that, four million games, four and a half million games, and, which is quite a bit larger than the Fritz 13 database. So I usually go into the Big Database, and what I'll do is double click it, and that opens up sort of a new page, and that has like all the games, four and a half million games. So obviously, I'm not going to scroll down and like find the individual game that I want. I have to click this board button. Right? There's all these different folders, and I'm not even sure. I mean, under statistics, you have one called Status Tikian, which is probably German, but I mean, piece probability? How often pieces end up on different squares? That's. Pr I mean, this is like not really necessary, right? Okay, let's put a let's put a knight. All right. So I have no idea how that how that works, but I was just trying to. Honestly, I think that there's a lot of unnecessary features in uh, Chess Base 11. It's a pretty bulky program. So the only thing that's actually really useful is you hit the board button. I'm giving you the honest truth. You wouldn't hear it from anybody else. So you hit the board button. And now it brings you a board. Okay, so I'm waking up this morning. I want to look at this one line. I was, I was, uh, I was black. Either way, so I want to look at this one line of the Sicilian. So if they if they play, so here, 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 and now here. Okay, so this is a this is a gambit, and I think that this is a pretty a pretty interesting line. So after takes, knight takes, I think it's really strong in blitz, especially at the amateur level. So here, so this is the important stuff. So here it sells us the moves, the games, the score, and last played. So these are the different moves that have been played. This move, uh, knight b, can I draw? No, knight b to c6 and a6 are by far the most common moves in this position. And uh, you see that white has gambited upon but uh, white will have some initiative for that pawn and so I've, I was playing this at the park yesterday so I just wanted to look it up and uh, share it with you guys for the hell of it so let's see so knight c6 they're probably going to transpose bishop c4 that looks like the bait move and now a6 is going to be played alright so a6 you kind of have this structure you're going to put the queen to c7 etc so now o to o is by far the most common move and now it looks like knight, this is what I, I, so I woke up thinking about this line, this exact position, and I was like, but you can't play knight f6, because then after they play e5, and where does this knight go, right? That's what I was thinking. And so now, with chess base 11, I'm able to see that in, in this exact position, the most common move is knight g to e7, which avoids that e5 push. So now if they play bishop here, you actually play f6 to f5, they retreat with the bishop, and you play b5, b3, 
knight g6, knight centralizes, bishop b7. This is pretty interesting. So the king is uh, somewhat safe with these pawns. Queen comes out to h5. That's a pretty good move, probably. Takes, takes. So this is just the most commonly played line, but it doesn't mean that it's the best. So let's go back for a moment. And uh, this position, I think... I think th th this position was was interesting. Uh, let's, so the cool thing is, is we're over here on this tab over here. We have white and black. And we can go ELO, ELO white to see who are the strongest players that have played this position. So Kamsky played this position. He's the strongest player. He's also in the US Open right now. So you can double click that to look specifically at his game. And see that he played knight here, but here and then he just played b5 immediately. Bishop b3, bishop b7. He avoided playing f6, which I think makes subsets because f6 does create weaknesses. So he put the queen to b8 and then moved the knight away. And you see that this is a pretty pretty interesting position. And it looks like white doesn't quite have enough for the pawn with uh, perfect play by black. But here's king f7. That looks pretty dangerous. So white does win the pawn back. So now we're, we're pretty far out of the opening. I'm maybe Kamsky just outplayed him. It looks like he did. It looks like uh looks like this was maybe a blunder because of knight f6, right? Forking the two pieces. But anyway, so you kind of you, you use this reference tab, um use this reference tab and you use the, uh the the t this tab over here and you kind of start to look, okay, who's the strongest player who played this position because not al not always the most commonly played position is the best position right so you kind of find a balance you try to follow the best players see what they did as well as follow you know what is most commonly played and sort of find you know where where it works for uh where where it's good for both players so you could see that in this position you know uh it looks like white has won about 40 percent and then black has won about 40 percent so there's about 22 percent draws or something they should make it a little more explicit there's way too many, like way too many useless buttons, and not, you know, not enough, like clearly useful stuff, in uh, chess base. So I do think that the chess base products are kind of bulky. I mean, I wouldn't give them, I wouldn't give them a, you know, t 10 out of 10 rating. Like they, they're kind of crappy, but they're also just the best, the best thing that exists right now. And maybe someday somebody like me will come up with some better software, but. For now, you can actually you can still learn really a lot by using Chessbase, even if it's not a perfect program. So thanks for watching Portland Chess Shop. Uh, if you like this video, that helps me a lot. Appreciate it. Bye.